Hi guys, and welcome to the Fuzzy Love Knots podcast. I'm back. Oh my gosh. Took a long time. But life happens, and I know it was a while. But I'm here, and I have stuff to show, and that's what matters, right? <laughs> so I am Nina, and you can find me on Instagram as Anne LaFontaine. And you can find me on Ravelry as Fuzzy Love Knots. And there's a group on Ravelry for the podcast and general fiber loving craftiness. So, hold on, I'm in the middle of this row here because I started to record and someone is renovating the office building next door and they decided to start cutting lumber or metal or something and it was really loud so I was like I'm gonna knit on this hat for a couple rows while I'm waiting for them to stop and they just stopped and then I started recording while I was in the middle of this row so now we're at the end okay so how are you guys I'm good <laughs> I'm good it's summer in Santiago and it is warm and I'm in tank tops and shorts and skirts and it's just great it's wonderful and um, I'm sorry to everybody who has to watch this who's in cold <laughs> snowy places but maybe it you'll get some warm vibes and it will warm you up when you need it so um, I'm not going to go into all the stuff that I've knit um, since I didn't record. But I will show you what I'm working on now and um, a really cool announcement. And I'll show you um, some samples, some finished items for some new patterns that either are just out or are coming out shortly. So, um, uh, let's get right into it. So since the last time I recorded, I finished my Exploration Station um, by Stephen West, and this will be the only, I'm scooting back because it's so big, and um, I want to be able to show at least a good portion of it. Um, and I think the last time I recorded, I had either just started knitting it or, um, I know I I had my yarn for it, um, but here it is finished. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I wear this thing constantly. Um, it's probably my favorite shawl I've knit. Um, I seriously wear it all the time, and it's huge. I didn't even really block it out very large, and it's um, it's really big. <laughs> Um, I know that like if I wanted to I could block it out even larger um, but here it is and I used O wool in the O wool fingering which is a, like a woolen spun two ply and I just followed the pattern so I didn't modify it in any way I did the eye cord edging and bind off. When I chose my colors, I stuck to it. Um, the only thing that I did that you're probably saying that is not in the pattern is right here. I knit an extra row on accident with this color because I wasn't quite paying attention. So, or maybe I like, I didn't change. I think what I did is I didn't change colors on the correct side. I think I changed colors on the wrong side or instead of the right side or something like that. So this one um, where you normally get the dark color in between each section at the end of the brioche section here you have a little bit of a, a light kind of running through it. Which doesn't bother me. It's a design feature, not a flaw. <laughs> I wasn't about to rip out, you know, however many stitches it was at that point and mess with the brioche and the yarn over. This is the first time I did brioche. So I was like, I'm not messing with it. There's also a mistake in the brioche somewhere in there. 
don't know where it is. That's not one. That's just a, a bulkier piece of yarn. I don't know where it is. There's a mistake in there somewhere. Which, again, I tried to fix. Oh, there it is. I tried to fix it, but I am not adept at brioche. So, um, I'm okay with it. I did the I-cord bind off. I think it took me about two and a half hours, three hours to do the bind off for the whole thing. Put a movie on. Wasn't a big deal. I love it. Because of the way the colors are, um, there's the, there's how huge it is. And that's it scrunched up. I can wear it across my back or over my whole shoulder and it really, you know, it's too hard to wear. It's too big off. Um, but like it was windy last night and I had the windows open because it was fresh, but I was cold because I just taken my, my hair was up and wrapped it up in bed. So there's my exploration station. I love it so much. Um, this is my first Stephen West pattern that I knit, and I love it so much that right now I have three Stephen West patterns on my needles. So, um, which you'll see um, in just a second. Um, so there is that. So um, my next uh, work in progress is actually no let's go to finish objects we'll do finish objects and then we'll do work in progress so my next two finish objects that i'll show you are for patterns that i have coming out uh that I either have just released or have coming out soon so um this one is my marigold cowl and if you follow me on instagram you would have seen pictures of this it's knit using um the wonderful single ply worsted um, yarn that is hand dyed using natural dye stuff by um, Buckaloo View. And um, I, it's dyed with marigolds, which is how I named, which is why I named it Marigold. And Liesel did such a wonderful job dyeing the yarn. I really loved it. And, um, so the cowl is super skinny in the back and is a triangular shaped cowl and that's so you can just pop it on and it doesn't mess with your hair you don't have to style it and you don't have all of that bulkiness that you get a lot with um, like a triangular shawl or something you don't have all that bulkiness in the back if you're going to wear it with a sweater or if you're going to wear it inside of a jacket, this zips up into a jacket really nicely. It has a really pretty cabled lace pattern, diamond cable lace pattern on the front in the center. And it starts out flat like a triangle, triangular shawl construction and then it's joined in the round. And it's knit in garter stitch on the sides. It's super squishy. And then I finish mine off with a tassel. Sorry, I haven't blocked it in a while. Um, I finished mine off with a tassel just to really get the most out of my yarn. I had a little bit left. So I made a tassel. And I did this, um, when I attached it, I had two strands. And rather than just tying it, I kind of like looped them into each other. So I got a more firm, um, instead of just like a single strand of yarn for that. Um, yeah, I really love it. I wear it all the time. I like how it kind of dips down in front. It uses a I-cord cast on. That's very similar to um, cast on method Stephen West uses all the time. Um, it uses a I-cord edging and an I-cord bind off. So you get this really nice, clean edge. It's really kind of sturdy and stretchy. And um, I really love it. And it, like I said, uses worsted weight yarn. I think it's just over 400, just over 220 yards. So you can um, either make a really huge one if you want to use a couple skeins, or you can make a smaller one and just use a single skein if you have a larger skein of worsted. Also, it would be really pretty and hand spun, I think, to 
show off the texture in this, this garter stitch. So there's that one. And that pattern is already out and on Ravelry. It came out over Thanksgiving weekend. There's the back. Um, came out over Thanksgiving weekend, so that's available on Ravelry and um, on my Etsy shop. But I think Ravelry is just easier for everybody, probably. And um, the lace is both charted and written out. Mm -hmm. And then um, something really cool that's been going on is um, there is a local yarn shop. Um, local to me, that um, the owner dyes her yarn and um, she created and ran a very successful yarn company prior to this one. And, um, and then she, um, I believe, sold her, sold, she sold the company. Um, so she kind of missed it and she wanted to start another um, endeavor. And so now she has a smaller yarn company and store. She has a, a store too. And um, I, we were at a fiber festival. I, me and her, my husband were at a fiber festival. And um, I purchased some yarn from her. And really, um, I'll show you the, I'm leaving my doodler with it. So I'll show you the yarn in a minute. Um, purchased some yarn from her and we got to talking and um, we decided to kind of collaborate. So I'm creating patterns for her yarn. She's providing yarn support and, um, and I'm using her beautiful yarn to make some really kind of cool stuff. And um, I know that these patterns, um, these patterns are all going to be uh, more simple and the aesthetic is very, um, I'd say the aesthetic is very kind of easygoing and um, very easygoing and very easy to wear. And most of the items are going to be easily styled multiple ways. Um, so one of them, I already dropped off the sample to her at the store, so I don't have it with me. And that one is... Um, Mele Mele, and that is a, it's knit out of a cotton ribbon, ribbon style yarn, and um, let me see, I have, uh, I have some yarn in a different color right here, let me get it, okay, so this is some of the same yarn that it was designed with, but not the same color, this is a swatch, <laughs> so the yarn is this, uh, it's 100% cotton and it's n like a knit tube. So if you are familiar with Quince & Co. Kestrel, the construction is exactly is the same. It's the same similar yarn that's just made out of linen and this is this yarn itself is cotton. Um, so that actually would be a really good substitution for this pattern if you just wanted to knit it out of Kestrel instead of this. Um, but here's the swatch for the pattern. So it's knit in garter stitch and uses um, dropped stitches to give lots of um, movement and texture to it. It's knit in a rectangle and then seamed. And um, I'll put in some pictures here if I can <laughs> of it, the pictures that are in the pattern and on Ravelry. And um, so you can wear it either like a vest type shrug thing, <laughs> garment that has a racer back style, or you can wear it like a poncho, like an asymmetric poncho, or you can twist it and wear it as a cowl. And um, I like that it's so versatile, and then, you know, the material that you knit it out of also is going to lend to how you wear it as well um and i think that it's um it's just a really cool really cool garment um i'm so sad that i had to give the sample back to back to michelle back to the store um but 
yeah, nice squishy garter stitch. The sample I knit, the yarn was this really pretty, um, where is the leftovers? I don't know. I have some leftovers somewhere and I just don't, I just don't know where they are. I think they're in their basket over there. It was a really pretty kind of mauve and grays and, um, lavenders and it's really, really pretty. And the other pattern and that she has that already. Um, and she's selling the patterns in Spanish, um, and I'm, I am selling the patterns in English. So that pattern is going to go up, um, this week sometime. It'll go up on Ravelry. And then this pattern will go up probably next week on Ravelry. And this one is a tank top. It, it does have multiple sizes. It has two sizes. It's an oversized boxy tank top. Um, so it has a large size, which is the size that I'm going to show you. And um, if it's me, I'm plus size um, and I'm fairly chesty. So um, it's easily adaptable to other sizes if you needed it bigger. But it also comes, the pattern also includes a medium, which would be great if you're smaller, more petite, it is an overall smaller size, or if you just don't want something that's as um, boxy, as oversized, you just want something that's a little bit more fitted. So I'll put it on so you all can see it, but I'll hold it up too. So it has a garter stitch up top on the bodice, a nice wide open neckline, and the body is knit in stock and neck. It uses a German twisted cast on, so you have a nice row of purl stitches on the cast on, and that means that your cast on edge doesn't purl up like it does usually with stock in it. So you don't have to have like garter stitch on your cast on edge if you don't want to. And then um, it's knit in two pieces and then seamed. So there's your seam, and then you have an unseamed portion for your armholes. And there you go. So I, I'm, like I said, I'm so sad that I have to, <laughs> that I have to give this up to the shop. I'm in the process, and you'll see, I'm knitting myself one out of a different material. Um, the yarn is by Michelle, by her, by, um, Quinta Puntos. That's her yarn company. Um, it's one of her yarns again, but it's a much different yarn than this is. And, um, it's going to give a much different look. I'm making a more, a modified version of it. So it's more tailored. It'll be more fitted in the bodice. It won't be this wide and boxy, which I do really like this, but it'll be this wide in the hip but not so much in the bodice. Um, so this yarn, this is such cool yarn. I really love this. This again is like a knitted tube. Here's a swatch. It'll actually be easier to see off the swatch. Um, it's a ribbon yarn, but it's the content is viscose and cashmere. So it's super, super soft. You can see the little, you can see how soft and fuzzy it is. It doesn't get, um, it doesn't pill. I've been sitting here like as I knit, like rubbing the swatch to see how it wears and it wears extremely well. And once it's, you can see the gauge is extremely loose also. Like I could stick my whole finger through if I wanted. And it just bounces back so well. And the yarn itself is so stretchy. But once it's blocked, you can see how much movement and drape the fabric has. And I'll turn sideways just so you can see how well it, it just falls so well. And you get kind of like a faux sleeve. So this would be a really nice knit. Um, Really, in any worsted weight yarn, I could see this knit in some wool blend, something with alpaca to really give you some really nice drape, like a linen silk blend or a linen cotton blend would be really nice for summer. 
Um, or if you wanted something warmer to layer, something in wool I think would be really great. And um, on me, it falls to about my hip, a little bit past my the f what um, the measurement would be your full hip. That's where it falls to. Yeah. So this pattern will be out next week, sometime. Um, it's already been edited, and I have my final version. Um, but I need to just read it through one more time and make sure Michelle gets the Spanish version before I release mine. So that's that. And this one is called Furi Furi. <laughs> so the names for these patterns are derived, they're not exact, but they're derived from um, Mapuche words. Um, and the, the Mapuche are the indigenous peoples of Chile. So I thought that that would be fun to take and name the patterns um, for that. So fru the word fruity means back, like the back. And since the back and front pieces of the garment are the same, I thought it would be kind of fun. Fruity, fruity, like back to back, back and back. Um, and then mele, mele. Mele means four, and the construction of the garment looks like a figure eight. So mele, mele, two fours, four, four. That's how those names <laughs> came to be. So in case you were wondering. Um, so if any of you, just in case you see something else that I'm knitting with some um, cuenta puntos yarn, um, in case any of you wanted to get in touch with Michelle and get some of her yarn, um, she doesn't currently have an online shop, but she told me to tell you guys that um, if there's something specifically that you want or if you want some of the yarn that I knit with, um, to let me know and then I will let her know and I'll get you guys in touch with each other. Um, and then she will find a way to get it to you is exactly what she said to me. So um, just let me know if that is in the, a wish for you guys. Um, yeah, so that's that. So um, I can't believe it. Like I, two patterns in two weeks. It was so crazy. I've been so incredibly exhausted. I wrote the patterns because Michelle had a deadline. She wanted to get these patterns out in time for Christmas. Um, She's make, uh, she's putting out some kits in the store for them, which is um, why why they needed to be out in that time frame. And um, so yeah, so aha, but they're done, and I'm so excited. I really do like them. Um, I have so many ideas for more patterns, and since I'm kind of on the pattern roll, the next I think until New Year I'll be knitting, doing some selfish knitting, and a little bit of gift knitting. And then after that, I'm going to be getting back to work. So, um, yeah. But I go on vacation tomorrow because it's my anniversary on the 18th. It's our three-year wedding anniversary, me and Guillermo. So, um, I we're going to be gone till Friday. And I just thought, I'm going to be gone. I'm done with work. What am I going to knit? Because I get to just we get to just sit on our bums and do nothing. So I'm going to show you guys what knitting I'm bringing on the trip. These are not all of my works in progress because a lot of my works in progress I had to put on pause to get some of these patterns done. Um, but this is what I'm bringing on the trip. I thought you guys might think that this was fun to see this. So I mentioned um, that I'm knitting a bunch of Stephen West patterns. And I already mentioned um, the doodler, so I'll show you guys that first. Um, I know lots of people are niddling, are, are niddling. Well, it's a doodler, so you might as well be niddling it, right? <laughs> um, I know lots of people are knitting the doodler, um, and I'm really behind on it because I was working. So, um, if you want to be surprised because you are not done with clue one, or you haven't started at all or anything like that, don't look. Um, but I think at this point, most people are probably finished with their stuff. 
by now. So I don't think I'll be spoiling anybody. But here we go. So I left off. Oh, no, I'm in the middle of a row. Oh, no, I'm on a wrong side row. Whatever. You'll be able to see it. Okay. Um, so I left off. I'm almost done with clue two. Um, like I said, I'm using yarn from Michelle from Quinta Puntos. And um, I chose, I'll show you the yarn first. I chose this for my color A. I posted pictures of this yarn on Instagram. So um, if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen the yarn. It's uh, Merino Worsted Spun um, Light Fingering Weight. And it's um, really pretty. The colors are a little bit more intense. There you go. A little bit more intense. Really pretty. There's my color A. My color B is... This is connected, so you're going to get a... That is true to color. I love how there's like orange, just little shots of orange in there, and then hot pink, and then some darker corals, really pretty. And then my last color, my color C, is, this is going to blow out, this is not going to be true, oh, that's true to color, like that. It's like this dark burgundy wine color dusty because it's been sitting in my project it's richer than that it's so pretty I, I just every time I try to take a picture of this and it doesn't turn out and it makes me so sad because it's just so pretty okay so here's my dupes so far I'm at like the very end but I only have a couple more rows on my cable I think I have one more cable to do. I think I'm. I think my next row is a cable row, actually, and then and I think I have like another dot. That. I took the stripe through the edging. I know it's not what the pattern says, but I wanted to do it, so I did it. Hmm. And I wove in all my ends as I went, except for these guys. These are the because I hate weaving in ends at the very end. Like, I absolutely detest it. So I wove in all my ends as I went. <laughs> yeah. So that's that. And I love it. It's going to be ginormous. Like, I could wear it right now if I wore a pin with it. And my mom, who, like, doesn't usually like this kind of stuff, saw mine and is, like, emoji, heart eye, heart eye emoji, loved it. Wants one. So, she's not going to get a doodler. But I might knit her a dotted raise. So, which is similar. Okay. So, that is my doodler. My next Stephen West pattern that I'm knitting is I just cast it on yesterday in preparation for vacation knitting. Um, I'm knitting a dotted raise. Mm -hmm. And I'm knitting the worsted version. Oh my gosh, I have I have a huge cable on this in preparation for it being ginormous. I don't want to change my cable. Um, so I'm knitting a dotted raise. I'm knitting the worsted version. And I'm using, um, I threw the labels away already because I'm lame. Um, I'm using Araucania. Kinye? Kanye. Um, this is one of those <laughs> ribbon knit tube. Oh, no, it's not a knit tube. I lied to you. It's cable plied. There. Can you see it? It's like 15 strands of a two ply. It's cable plied. But it's like super, it's really stretchy. So I'm knitting it in two colors. 
I have this like purple fuchsia color and then I have this fuchsia coral tangerine color. So I'm going to knit the majority of it. I have two skeins of this and one of this. Because I'm knitting the worsted weight version, it's going to be ginormous. And I think that these have like 300 and something yards each. So I'm going to knit one whole... I'm going to knit the wedges, this by itself. And then for the second skein, I'm going to knit the wedges with this and then um, the row where you close the yarn overs in the short rows, I'm going to use this to separate them, just like the doodler when you get the rays on the doodler. Okay, I'm gonna use this. So starting halfway through the shawl, you're gonna start to get striping. And then the last wedge and the bind off I'm going to do in this. That's the plan. I don't know if I'll actually end up doing it. Like everything, that's the plan, but I don't know if I'll end up doing it. So we'll see if I'll end up actually doing it that way. But that's that's my plan for right now. So I cast it on yesterday just so I wouldn't have to cast it on, um, cast on while I was out and to make sure I liked the fabric I was getting and I didn't have to bring all my needles with me and I could just have the needles that I had with me. So here's my little baby daughter rays that I have right now. <laughs> little progress keeper. My little sweater. Knit sweater progress keeper. My little baby daughter rays. I love, this is going to block out so nice. It's going to be just holy enough that it's going to be nice and loose but not so loose and holy. And it's going to be ginormous. It's going to, look how big those double yarn overs are, are. Like, I mean, I could put my whole thumb through and still have room. I could put my thumb and my index finger through. That's how big they are. I could put my whole nose through. Oh, it's just going to be so good. The yarn is 80% merino, 20% Tessa silk. That's what the blend of the yarn is. And it's just it's just so squishy and so good. So um, this is project number two for my vacation knitting. And I'm only going to be on four days. But, like, we're going to this, like, uh, it's not like a retreat. But it's, it's one of those, um, yeah, like um, retreat places where... You know, you don't have TVs in your rooms, or, I mean, maybe they do have TVs in their rooms, but last time we went, I don't think we had a TV in our room. And, um, and it's, like, really quiet, and there's, like, no internet unless you're in the lobby, and they have pools, and it, the night, beautiful gardens, and I know I'm going to, like, sit in the garden all day and just knit. That's all I'm going to do. So I thought I'd bring... A menu of knitting. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so project number two, three, project number three that I'm bringing with me is a pair of socks for Guillermo. This is in a project bag that um, that was sent to me by a viewer. I love them. I love it. She offered to, um, Tanya, her name's Tanya. She offered to send me some project bags because I didn't have any project bags. I only have these like dinky bento bags that I made for myself. And then I only had two of those. And other than that, I just keep them loose in like, um, I just keep them loose in tote bags, which is kind of bad. So. Um, she offered to send me some project bags, which I think is so awesome. So um, I love them. Thank you. I use them so much, and they fit. They are. They don't look like they fit that much, but they're huge, really. So in here are Guillermo's socks. So sock one is done. 
It is just a two by two rib up top. Heel flap, heel turn, gusset. This is, uh, it looks super pointy right now. But this is uh, Nina's recipe for a rounded toe decrease. I'll put my hand in there so you can see how nice it looks because it looks really nice on. And it is, a mo I decreased down to like four stitches. So I decreased really small, like down to nothing. I literally, I think I Kitchener four stitches each side. But you could decrease to like, 10 and then have a more boxy toe if you want but see how much more round it I mean it looks super pointy because of this but like picture that they're blocked and that it's not you know that this little point isn't so like that you know it's a much more rounded decrease I'm coming out with um, a sock pattern that has the decrease in there it's not anything special really it's decreased to half your stitches every other row and then decrease the remainder of your decided stitches every row. So that's how you get that more rounded toe. I know a lot of people ask about the rounded toe. So that's one sock done. This is I think some just Regia self striping sock yarn. Yeah, Regia design line. I can never remember which one is the like lot number and which one is the color. So there's the tag. And the other sock is a mere glimmer on the needles. Haven't even finished the ribbing yet. So there's that. And here's what this here's what the yarn looks like in the skinny. In case you guys wanted to see it. And I have my soak um, fig hand cream in this bag because this yarn is great for socks and not good for my hands. It's like makes my hands so scratchy. So I keep my hand cream in there and Okay, so there's socks, and then here um, next is my um, my modified fruity fruity that I'm knitting for myself. I get to keep this one. So this yarn is also by Cuenta Puntos, and this yarn is a. I'll take this cake out because I finally got a ball winder, guys. <laughs> So all my stuff from now on will be wound in cakes. And I just looked out that, okay, so the, the ball winder works wonderfully. It's not here. Look, here's proof. See, it works well. This is misshapen, not because of the ball winder, but because of um, the yarn itself. And I'll, I'll show you why in a second. But. I happen to get one of the ball winders, like Maria from Stitch and Sweeten, who's, it just makes this gorgeous honeycomb. So I don't do anything crazy when I wind my balls, because, I mean, when I wind my cakes, my yarn cakes, um, because I've already had people ask. I have a cheapy plastic swift. I think it cost me like 15 bucks at my yarn store. It's like the metal and plastic one, super cheap. And the one that the ball winder I have is this white and red one. It's called the wool winder. They have them on Amazon. I think they're like 25 bucks on Amazon or something like that. I got mine locally at a local yarn store. So it was more expensive because she, she imported them. This little guy right here tightens down this, and I have these cotton <laughs> pads on so it doesn't damage my thing. That's why they're there, if you're wondering. Um, okay, so the reason that it looks all wonky, though, <laughs> is because the yarn is gently thick and thin. So this yarn is wool, linen, and silk. So see how it's like super thin and then thick. 
Um, it's really soft, and I think that there's close to almost 500 yards in a skein. So I have three skeins. I think I might pick up another one just for insurance. Um, but I will show you, instead of showing you the actual garment on the needles, because this is not, this isn't fun to look at, I'll show you the swatch. Where's the swatch? Here it is. <laughs> So I'm holding it double. I'm holding it double. That's what it, that's the thickness double. Like not not that thick. That's a thin spot. So it goes from like potential to be super thick double to potential to be like a sport. It goes from like sport to a uh, worsted to a uh, light fingering. That's like the range that this can go in. But I like that because, you know, you get some stitches that are really big and you get some stitches that are really small and you know. I think it adds a really pretty kind of, you can see the thicker, the thicker areas like here and here like you can't really see through them, but I think it makes it look really kind of tweedy. And then the um, the linen doesn't die, and the silk doesn't die too. The silk stays more light, you know, but the linen is the white bits that you're seeing. So I'm doing the bottom of this one in garter stitch, and then the rest of it will be in the stockinette. And it's like so stretchy and it's so soft. The linen, at first I thought was gonna be, the linen parts were gonna be a little on the scratchy side, but they're not, it's really, it's really soft. So, yay, ran out of space, but that's okay because now I have more space. <laughs> okay, yeah, so that is my tank. So like I said earlier, um, I'm modifying this one so I, it is the same width of the bottom, but it's gonna be more fitted in the bodice. I'm adding waist shaping. The other one, the original pattern has slight waist shaping up the side, um, but this one I'm adding more severe waist shaping up the side of the bust so that it kind of tucks in really nicely. Um, well, I think it's gonna be really nice. We'll see. We'll see when I get to that part. Um, this is the first pattern that I've written for myself that has like, like shaping in it and decrease here and increase there and do this. So we'll see how it turns out. Um, there's some negative ease in the top, and this fabric still looks okay stretched a little bit um, like it doesn't look too like it's not gonna be like that but you know so I think it's gonna turn out really really well um, and I'm really excited about it I mean like this is just this is so nice and it's it's warm enough to where you can I could wear this just like with my featherweight and and a shawl and be perfectly warm in the when it's cold here so, um, so I'm excited about it. Um, hopefully it will knit up rather quickly for me. So that's what I'm taking on the trip. I'll show you, you a few other works in progress real quick. Um, I mentioned the hat that I was knitting on, um, I needed something just super easy, super fast. So I am knitting just a regular good old plain slouchy hat because you can never have enough of those. Um, the yarn is a mystery skein. I have no idea what it is. Um, my friend Jamie sent it to me in a package 
and um, she didn't know what it was either. Um, she said she got it uh, from somewhere and didn't have a tag when she sent it to me. So um, there is a company, I can't think of what it is. I will put it down here um, after I ask Kat again what it is because she, we talked about it when we met up this week and my brain is just it's gone it's out of there but there's a company apparently that um makes they're called mill ends and what it is is when a mill is spinning yarn there's always kind of like a little bit of yarn left on the cone when they ply or whatever you know the ends <laughs> the ends that don't get used otherwise and the, the little bits of extra and what they do is they, um, I'm not at, at a point, but what they do is they just kind of spin them all together. And um, so they'll take two and ply them together. And then when, they, when one runs out, then they'll add in another color. And then they'll ply it till one runs out. And then they'll add in another one. And then they just keep going. So apparently there's a company that does this. And they're pretty popular. And what's nice is that because they're a two-ply and they use different colors, it really looks like hand spun. And um, it's really soft. I haven't, I have no idea on the fiber content. I haven't done a burn test to see if it's a natural fiber. I have no idea what this is. The company that does the mill end skeins, they use 100% wool. So, I mean, this... Could be wool, could be a blend. I have no idea, but I really like the colors. I like how they're striping. This one is a pink and purple. There we go. I like forgot that the camera's on this side, that the lens is on this side, so excuse me. Okay, this one's like a pink and purple, and then it goes into a purple and orange marl and then an orange and teal marl which is where I am now which is like this and then it'll go into orange and red and then red and yellow so I mean this is already you know I'm not going to put it on because that will be like ridiculous but it's already I think by the end of the teal, I'll only knit a little bit of the red before it starts to get into the too slouchy zone. So maybe I'll knit into the red and then use the rest for a pom-pom on top. And do a big old huge pom-pom. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But it's really nice and soft and the hat fits perfectly. It's just like my basic hat recipe. I think I cast on 120 stitches, knitting magic loop, and I'm on, I'm using my Haya Haya's, Haya Haya Sharps, on size 3.75, yep, size 3.75, and this is about a sport weight. So that's that, because I needed something just super simple. And I did a two by two rib. And then the other Stephen West pattern I'm knitting is a Christmas gift for my mother-in-law. She knows that I'm knitting this, so this is not a surprise. I just haven't been able to work on it for a really long time. So you won't be able to get the full glory of this because it's on the needles, all scrunchy like this. But this is a Holy Chevron Holy Chevron's pattern, Stephen West, and I'm using this really pretty kind of pinky coral and cream. So I'm using the cream for the contrasty row here, and then the coral for everything else. And I'm almost done with the body of the shawl. 
once this blocks this will stretch I think I have 20 more rows in this wedge I have 20 more rows in this wet I don't know why this wedge is shorter than this wedge I think I made a mistake I'm pretty sure I made a mistake that's why I think I have 20 rows left in this wedge anyways it doesn't matter it still looks good um, so I have 20 more rows left in this wedge and then I stripe the border the the border and the border I think it's the same I looked at the pattern it's the same as this border only it's done in stripes so one row will be the white and one row will be the pink all the way down the um, pattern does not call for the I-cord bind off but I think I'm going to do an I-cord bind off um, oh maybe I won't because I didn't do an I-cord bind off up here. I mean an I-cord edging up here I don't know it depends I'll ask Delia and see what she wants if she wants an I-cord bind off then I'll do an I-cord bind off and if she doesn't then, then I won't I'm using Abuelita yarns my favorite in the merino singles fingering that's the white this is the end of skein one <laughs> and I have another skein over there already caked up right right there another skein already caked up ready to go for skein two and this is in another bag. I don't think I did. And I love this fabric so much. I don't know why I love it so much, but I absolutely adore it. I saw that she had this fabric and I didn't ask her for it. <laughs> I just told her what colors I liked and um, this is one that she sent me and I just love it. And the, I think the zipper just matches perfectly and everything. So there's that. So that's my works in progress. I have some spinning stuff. Um, I'll show you what I'm spinning on currently. And um, I don't think that I will get anything out that I've already spun. Um, I have a whole... <laughs> I have a whole um, space bag full of hand spun. Maybe I'll get. Let me get the space bag full of hand spun just to show you the bag itself because I think it's cool. Here is my space bag full of hand spun. <laughs> sorry for the crinkling. Not sorry. So some of this you guys have seen some of it you haven't um when i store my hand spun i put it in space bags but i don't suck the air out i just kind of zip it and then um i have my box spring of my bed is hollow and it opens up for storage which is awesome so my extra fiber and yarn and stuff i keep under there um and then um so i have one space bag of yarn that needs finished skeins that need to be like washed and finished and then finished skeins that are like dried and finished and ready to be stored or used or whatever so um maybe i'll just show you a couple of my favorite ones that i've spun since last time we talked this is totally one of them i posted a picture of this on instagram it's a woolen spun Aaron weight it's like a worsted Aaron, really. And it's a Columbia from, I believe it was from Wooly Booly Fiber. And it was in the raw turquoise color. I absolutely adored spinning this. It just was like, <sighs> the fiber prep was great. It was so squishy. It was one of those you didn't even have to try. You just went like this and the fiber just and you let the twist in and it just went and it was perfect it was roving it was not top and it just I mean I don't know if you can see the I'll hide my face so it will focus on it <laughs> I don't know if you can see the fibers in there but it's just 
it's so nice and it's so like sproingy and wonderful loved it um i got some hand cards and i um i got some hand cards and i had some like random I got some hand cards and I got had some random pieces like just like little plops of merino and little plops of bamboo and little neps and had some random little things and so I thigh practice making some Rolags and little puny style Rolags off of my hand cards and um, and then I had no plan when I spun it I just spun it because it's my first time spinning from Rolags so this is what I got off of those, and I really love this. I don't know what I'm going to knit with it yet, um, and it's not a whole ton of yard. I think I have 600 yards of it, actually, so maybe it's 500 yards, but it's something. Um, but it's so fun because there's blips and neps in it. Um, I put some, there you go, I put some teal I put some lime green in there. There's white merino. There's blue merino. There's teal and purple merino. And I think, I don't think I put any pink merino, no. But all the pink is um, parts of the nets. There's some white um, bamboo silk in there, like bamboo. I'm trying to find a piece of it. Like here's a piece that wasn't spun really tightly or wasn't plugged well. But see what I'm doing mm. out of practice there you go but I really 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 love this like this is my first kind of art yarn and it's so look how full and just huge those skeins are I mean really um I love this little bit here where two neps twisted together in different colors and then it plied with the purple. So you have the lime green and the teal. And it's just so pretty. So I really like these a lot. And I love these big old fuzzy blobby neps and stuff. Um, when I, you know, the Get Your Yarn Wish Granted thing was kind of running around. And I kind of just threw it out there that I wanted some bits and pieces of different textured fibers and like a box of just like ends like fiber locks sorry silk neps silk noil just stuff to spin with um because i signed up for the um spinning art yarns class on craftsy because i think that um it will help me be a better spinner in even my smooth and untextured yarns just, you know, learning just more about yarns in general, I think is fun. Even though I'm not really like an art yarn or textured yarn person, um, I think it'll help me just in my techniques and help me um, to think outside the box. It'll help me think outside the box. Um, but I have a hand card so I can make little bats and I can make roll eggs and I can make poonies. So, um, and I really have been enjoying spinning woolen, which I'll show you a little bit more in a minute. Um, so yeah, so there's these, and then I've spun this, which I'll show you the second part of this in a minute. So this is some silk, merino, and cashmere blend, and I've spun this for my mom. The colors are really getting blown out, like those are the colors. And I posted this on Instagram, but... Um, this is chain plied, Navajo plied. And I mean, look at the drape on this. So this is skein one. And I'm spinning the rest of this fiber differently than this because while I like this, this is not how I intended it, how I thought. No. While I like this, I'm designing the rest of the yarn differently. So this is um, a bobbin of the current spin of it. <sighs> Sorry, it has 
some dust on it. Where did I stop? And I'm spinning this from the fold. So there's a part that's kind of come untwisted a little bit. But it's like super, um, super squishy. Try not to handle the bobbin too much. The colors are really pretty. I'll show you some of the fiber. I've made little nests. <laughs> this fiber is very difficult to spin. For me it is because of the different staple lengths within it. Here's the fiber. I really love this fiber company. I spin a lot of it. Um, I think it's a good price for the product. But this base, their Silky Cash Merino, is for me, it's like so difficult to spin. Um, sorry, these are, these are little, I've already separated to fold by color because I'm spinning in, um, colorations. But here's some of the little nests. I also posted a picture of these nests on Instagram. But I love the way, like you can see the way the silk is in there and the way the colors swirl together are just so pretty. And you can see how fine, how fine it is. And that's why it's difficult to spin. I'll show you in a sec the rest of that. Like that, I love that. That way that the, when the gold goes into the white, that undyed that goes into the purple that goes into the green is just so pretty so those are some of the little nests that I spun so what I did here's how I prepped it for this braid I opened the braid up and I tore each of the color sections apart so then you get a color section and then I am tearing staple lengths off of that color section. And because the, the staple lengths from the fiber content itself are different, it's kind of hard. But this is why it's hard to spin. But this is why it's easier to, for it to spin woolen. <laughs> so see that? That's like That is why it's hard to spin. So, so I would just take the section and you put it over your finger and you spin from the fold. Pointing my finger at the orifice and then it spins, it would pull off like this and then twist off and spin from the orifice like that. So it's taking a long time because each one of these little sections, you spin each one, not that big, I pull that in half probably. But you know, you spin each one of these little sections and then you pick up the next section but that's why it takes forever here's my sample that I spun but I'm spinning thinner than the sample but look that already is half the diameter that this is so I'm much better see how springy that is on the side so this is gonna be much better so the end goal, and I have three more braids of this. So the end goal is that this is going to be a big, huge shawl for my mom. That's what she wants. Okay. The other thing I'm spinning is this. Mm -hmm. And this is, let me put this in here because this is going to lose it. The other thing I'm spinning is this. And I love this BFL. I really do. I've spun a bunch of it. It's always so soft. Drafts like butter. Never, a pro I've never had a problem with this. It smells like acid dye and chic. You know, it smells so good. So this is on my wheel right now. And I'll take it off so you can see. 
And this I am not stripping down. I've just divided the braid in half. I'm spinning it lace weight singles, this little ply up, two ply like a sport weight. And I am just drafting it across the top and letting twist in. So it'll be a semi woolen. And I love the way the colors are playing up. I was really careful when I, I divided it and I weighed it and I split it down the middle. So I'm spinning it in the same direction each way. So I should get, you know, the colors will match up and in some places they'll mall. And that's how I'm spinning that. So there's lots of like greens and teals and purple. Yeah, so that's that. So that's my spinning. Um, I did an experiment with spinning some singles. Um, they have not been really low twist singles. I mean, they were as low twist as I could stand to make them. Um, so I, f I fold one and I'm thinking um, it held together really well, but I think I'm gonna put it on the Swift and then run it back through the wheel to like take out some of that twist, um, some of the extra twist and then like reset it and see how that works because it has some little twirlies in it still. Um, yeah, but other than that, that's all that's kind of going on here. I hope you guys are doing really good. I really miss you guys. I really miss talking to you guys. Um, and I really missed the group. I kind of just missed, missed. <laughs> so, um, Yeah. Let me know how you guys have been. Ask any questions. And I'm back. So hopefully this will be a thing again. Because I really enjoy it and stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Um, have a good day, guys. Have a good week. Maybe I will do a little recording from uh, Palomar when we're on vacation and uh, give you guys a look around. Yeah. So have a good time and um, happy knitting.